Hi, welcome to a new tutorial from SimplyMaya.com. In this tutorial I'm going to explain colour management in Maya 2016. I've been seeing some confusion on the forum from our users about this new colour management system, so I'm going to take this opportunity just to go over its settings and what it's actually doing. Now, by default, Maya 2016 will have colour management armed. So if we go up to Preferences, and have a look under color management you can see this will be ticked on now part of the confusion comes from the fact that if you open an older scene so an old project you were working on 2015 or 14 or a file from somebody else um, this is going to be ticked off so on old scenes and you'll see how that changes my render uh, my uh, viewport it will also change my render view it will change the way Maya handles textures so ticking this on and off will make a huge difference to your render this is why people are opening older files and getting results that are maybe slightly different than they expected so you need to be aware first of all that Maya 2016 will turn this off for old files so you just come in and turn it on and what it's actually doing is Maya is always rendered in a linear space now if I take a render of my um, ball here okay, you can see that it pretty much matches exactly what I've got in the viewport and this is what we want to see it's because my viewport has been corrected to sRGB and my render view has been corrected to sRGB now in the old days with this viewport you would see a raw image or a linear image if you like here and this led people to using extra lights and overly bright lights to lighten this image up and this leads to all sorts of problems with super brights, blown out hotspots and things like this so the old way was to put a lens shader on the camera some sort of simple exposure node to gamma correct this view so basically you can now do that just by coming up and hitting sRGB up here so that lens shader is no longer strictly necessary for you it's no longer also necessary to correct your textures with a gamma node when you've got this now this leads to another point of confusion because this image here is not what you're going to save if I just come up here and go save image now and we save this as a test JPEG let's say and then I open that test JPEG in Photoshop you'll see I've actually saved the raw image now if you just want to save a, a quick snap a test render or whatnot to email to a friend or you know show a colleague you can change the settings on this to save a color managed image now I would recommend against doing this for a final render really you should only be doing this when you um, when you save out an image as a, a kind of test something you want to keep around or as I say send to a friend normally you want to save the raw image and if you do any sort of photography you'll know from um, you know shooting photographs that what you want out of the camera is that raw image it makes it much easier to correct later on and that brings us into the scene tab here under the render settings you'll notice that by default now Maya saves out a 16-bit image which means that we'll get all the super brights in there and compositing will be much easier so let's take a look at this same image now I'm going to make sure that I'm saving out the raw image and this time I'm going to save it as an EXR So an EXR is capable of saving 16 and 32 bit images along with multiple render passes in the same file. So let's save this as test01.exr. Okay, now I'm going to open this up in Photoshop. And let's just bring that in. And as you can see, even though I saved the raw image, I am getting what I saw in the Maya render view which you would think I would have a raw image in here now and it would look like this well the simple fact is it does actually look like this Photoshop reads this in as a 32-bit image from that 16 image it actually is but Photoshop sees it as a 32-bit and then it assumes that it's a linear image so it corrects it accordingly now if I go up to HDR toning here you'll see because we've got this um, linear image we can go to uh, let's just say exposure and gamma and I can always correct this downwards to be what we saw here but the simple fact of the matter is what we want is this raw image and we want Photoshop to auto correct this or nuke or whatever it's reading in linear and showing us one with sRGB mapped on the top 
you'll notice that a JPEG does not do this because it's read as an 8-bit image so therefore Photoshop will assume that it's already been gamma corrected so it won't apply any kind of correction to it. Now this is why it's important to save out your files as 16-bit images. Um, one of the reasons anyway is because it's much easier during the compositing process. Most modern compositors, Nuke and whatnot, prefer a 16-bit EXR to work with. It gives you much more control. So avoid that confusion. Save as 16-bit um, images. And if you want to do a test JPEG or a test PNG, make sure you're saving a color managed image. Now you can actually go to the render settings and bake that color management in permanently. But as I hope I've demonstrated, what you really want from Maya is that 16-bit raw image. Now, that's the new color management workflow in Maya 2016. Basically, they've made it very, very simple. You tick color management up here, you leave the rendering space in linear, the view transform to sRGB, and unless you're saving out 8-bit JPEGs, uh, which I wouldn't recommend, then you want this output um, transform to render off. You do not want to transform permanently your renders. If you want to see what it looks like in pure linear, you can always hit the viewer to raw. So that's the new way of doing it. I'm going to have a quick run through the old way of doing it simply to show you the difference and you know for people that have older scene files I just want to run through what we used to do to show again how much simpler this has got. So in previous versions let's come in and turn the color management off completely. Okay, so now my color management is turned off, my view has gone darker, and I'm going to see, let's have a look here, this in the viewport. Okay, so it doesn't matter if I set this to anything now, the color management is off. So I'm getting this, which is fairly similar to the raw image that was produced, which is exactly the same, sorry, as the raw image that was produced when the color management was on. So back in the olden days, we would use a workflow that went something like this. We would first gamma correct the textures. So we would take this, let's just graph that out. There we go. And we've got a Miele material here with a diffuse reflection. So we would start by breaking the connection between the out color of the texture and the Miele material. We would then add a gamma correct node. And out of here into here and then out of here into the color of the Miele material or whatever material you were using. We would then correct the texture downwards to take the gamma off it. Okay, so that would be the first step and you would have to do this with every diffuse texture that you had. So every texture that was going to have a color in the render view, you would have to do that. Then what you would do is apply a lens shader to the camera. So mental ray and lens shader so let's see lenses uh, and let's use a exposure simple this would then gamma correct the whole thing to the correct gamma and you could then render and see that light gray background and the ball exactly as it was so you know if you're using the old workflow none of these color management settings are actually important and when we save this out now here's the problem with the old way when we save this out we're going to save that raw image and we're going to save it as a JPEG so test save O2 and open that up. Okay, and you see here I've definitely got a gamma corrected image even though I'm an 8-bit JPEG. So in previous versions of Maya, to jump through all the hoops to get the render view to look like you wanted it to do, you had to gamma correct your textures and then you had to apply a lens shader to the camera. However, in order to avoid saving out a color mapped image in older versions when you were ready to your final render, you had to go and break the connection to your lens shader. So this all became a huge pain in the backside when you were batch rendering, um, myself included and lots of other people I'm sure forgot to break the connection to the lens shader and would end up with color mapped images that we didn't need or want so you would come down after a 12 hour rendering session and find a bunch of useless images. Basically the old way in Maya uh, was very clunky and the new way is quite elegant really. All you need to bear in mind is that that color management system 
let's have a look at it, is going to be off by default in older scenes and on by default in new. You also need to bear in mind that if you're saving out 8-bit images, you are going to get the unmapped version, which you don't want on an 8-bit image, so apply the output transform to render, or simply come up here and save image as a uh, color managed image. If you're doing a uh, files for a composite, you've got 16-bit EXRs, then you can pretty much leave everything at default. So you can also change the color space here, of course, um, if you need for some specific compositing need or some match of view of some film footage you've already got. But in general, render in linear, output in um, view transform in sRGB, output in linear, correct in post. Okay, so I hope this has cleared up a bit of confusion. And if you've got those old scenes with um, a lens shader and with gamma correction on, you can simply turn off the color management and render them as is. Or you can break the connection with a gamma node, flip the lens shader off the camera and enable the new color management. The choice is yours. All right, so I hope this has enlightened some people, and uh, you can get me on simplymaya.com on the forum. A lot of friendly folks there if you need to ask a question. Thanks for your time. Cheers.